A Tale of Two Hygienists presents this week's tip episode. Quick and easy tips to keep you up to date and presented by the experts in the profession. Now, get ready for your unofficial tip episode. So we've all had those patients who, before we even start the appointment, tell us, don't try to tip me back. I can't lean back that far. Or when we have them leaned back into like full supine, they say that they're back too far and they need to sit up. So if this has happened to you or if this is happening to you and you're not quite sure what to do about it, please stay tuned because this tip episode is for you. This is Stephanie Botts. I'm a dental hygienist and ergonomics coach for dental professionals. And today I'd like to share some tips and techniques for the people I care about most, which is dental workers. Practicing dentistry, as we all know, is very hard on the body, not to mention the mind, but we're going to focus on the body today. We have so many risk factors that we face daily, such as awkward postures, repetitive motions, and overuse of certain muscles, just to name a few. And all of these really put us at risk for developing an injury over time. While some of these factors are out of our control just due to the nature of our work, there are many that we can control if we're more deliberate with our body awareness and being very intentional with our positioning. So these are the things that I work with my clients on, and I have to tell you, it's just so amazing to see the difference when my clients take control of the appointment and take control of their health and how their experience in the operatory changes. One thing I see a lot when I'm working with clients, especially when I'm doing my initial assessments, is a lot of the patients are positioned way too high in the chair. And this could look like the patient chair being up too high vertically or the patient isn't being reclined fully. In addition, this is the most common question that I get asked, how can I get my patient to lay all the way back? So this is what I'd like to talk about today. It's my belief that when patients say they can't lean back or they complain when they're fully reclined is that their cervical spine isn't being adequately supported. There seems to be this element of fear, and I'm not sure if they're scared that their head's going to come rolling off once we tip them back if it's not being supported here, but if we can support their cervical spine and get them comfortable, especially from the get-go, they are much more likely to let us lean them all the way back. So here's a few tips. Tip number one, use cushions. There are plenty of cushions available to help support our patient's cervical spine. Using a cushion is such a good tool, not only to allay our patient's fears and to keep them more comfortable and give them the sense that they're being pampered, but if we are using them correctly, they can be a really good ergonomic tool for us as far as controlling the occlusal planes and really being intentional with our positioning that will help us with our ergonomics. The cushions I use have a strap so you can securely attach it to the chair and they can be wiped down and disinfected in between patients. If you're curious about the cushions that I use, please visit my product section on my website, which is posturepros.net. So I use cushions for most of my patients, especially my geriatric patients. I just already have it attached to the chair so that when they sit down and lean back, they already feel that support in their cervical spine. And I can tell you, it's a visual, you can visually see the patients relax once they know that their cervical spine is supported. Tip number two is to pre-recline the patient chair and not all the way into like a flat position, but just about 30 degrees or so. But you're going to do this before you even bring your patient back into the operatory. You'll still be able to have eye contact and chat with your patient, but doing this lets their body get acclimated to the semi-reclined state so that when you go to tip them all the way back, there's less of a distance to go so it can be less disorienting for them. I know with me personally, if I go from a full upright sitting position to a full supine position within the matter of seconds, it can be disorienting for me. So especially with our patients, it can be even more disorienting for them. Tip number three is to tip them back in small increments. So this is when we get a little tricky. Sometimes we got to trick our patients, okay? I do this when I'm chatting with my patient. I'm either doing small talk with them or I'm talking to them about their oral hygiene at home, but I'm making sure that I'm having a dialogue with them so that they're forced to answer me. And this makes it so that they're focused on the conversation and they're focused on my questions and they're not focused on what I'm doing, which is slowly tipping them back bit by bit. 
So by the time we are done with our conversation, they're leaned back into full supine and they haven't said a peep. So that's something that's really worked for me. I want you to know that there's always going to be those situations when a patient legitimately cannot lean back in the chair due to physical reasons or otherwise, but this should be the exception, okay, not the rule. Tip number four is to check your positioning. So when you are in neutral posture, and this concept of neutral posture we're going to cover in a later tip episode, the patient's mouth should be at the level of your elbows when you're in neutral. So this is a really great gauge to make sure that you're in the right position. So these are just some really quick tips for you. I hope they help. If you'd like to learn more about ergonomics or about me or what I do, please visit my website, posturepros.net. All of my social media accounts are on there as well. I'm constantly posting tips and videos on ergonomics, stretches, exercises. Please contact me if I can help you at all with any of your ergonomic needs. Thank you and take care of yourselves. We hope you enjoyed this week's tip episode. Be sure to reach out to our guest experts and let them know how helpful their tips were. Follow A Tale of Two Hygienists on Facebook, Instagram, and head over to ataleoftwohygienists.com and subscribe to our newsletter. You can also email us at ataleoftwohygienists at gmail.com and keep listening for more awesome content from your unofficial dental hygiene podcast.